Absolutely. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, I, I grew up as a, a Christian and, uh, you know, I used to read some pretty amazing stories in the Bible. And, uh, you know, you would see Jesus uh, healing people, feeding people. And I thought, oh, th this would really be a great thing to do uh, with my life. And uh, I didn't want to be a farmer. Uh, so I thought, you know, I, I think I like this bit about healing others and, uh, you know, what would that path of life look like? So that was always the in intention. And uh, I've been an inventor at heart, so I, I love to explore other areas. Uh, but the past uh, maybe 12, 15 years has been dedicated to stem cell research and looking at how to activate the endogenous stem cells that are already in the human body. So there's a very, very exciting future ahead for all of us when we think, you know, 10, 20 years from now, stem cell injections will be very commonplace. So uh, they'll save lives. People will go to hospitals. Maybe they were in an auto accident. They'll get a stem cell injection and that will start the healing process. And um, I have been doing work with the uh, National University of Ireland in Galway. And uh, we received a research uh, grant from uh, Scientific Foundation Ireland. And uh, basically, uh, my proposal was to see if we could activate the stem cells that were already in the body. So instead of giving an injection, maybe we could make the stem cells young and active again and uh, improve the healing. So this would be natural, safe, and uh, hopefully effective. And uh, that project went extremely well. And, you know, it's a great point because there are a number of complementary things that people can do uh, along with our technology as well as to support their overall health and uh, stem cell function. So we know that diet plays a role. Keeping antioxidants elevated plays a role. Using technology like hyperbaric oxygen is going to increase the total number of circulating stem cells. So where our technology fits into this is that we can use light to initiate uh, specific biochemical pathways that increase production of uh, GHK copper peptide. And the advantage of this is that it modulates gene expression to reset the genes to a younger state. So now the stem cells in the body behave like younger, healthier cells. So we see some very dramatic examples of how people are healing from uh, chronic injuries uh, as well as acute injuries. Uh, that's actually extremely insightful, and it is the principal area of our research is looking at how to enhance mitochondrial function. So, uh, you know, some of the things, of course, that are popular today are looking at ways that we could elevate NAD with NMN supplements, which the FDA, of course, recently banned. Uh, and NR, uh, we look at uh, older things that have been around, like acetyl uh, L-carnitine and alpha-lipoic acid for enhancing mitochondrial function. And then uh, we really focus in on light therapy. Great question. So the first thing is that this is a non-transdermal patch. So to be clear, uh, there are no drugs or chemicals or natural compounds that are in the product that will diffuse through the skin in a, in a transdermal fashion. Instead, this is a non-transdermal patch, and it's activated by body heat. So in order to understand this properly, it's important to look at how do uh, signal induction and signal transduction mechanisms occur in the human body in the first place. And uh, some of the pioneering work on this was done by Fritz Pop in Germany. And uh, so we know that you take uh, plant cells, animal cells, human cells, and you put them in an environment that's completely dark and using a photomultiplier tube, you know, at least back in the old days, uh, then you could see light emission off of the cells. So these are highly coherent pulses of light. And in fact, the beauty of uh, the way uh, human beings were created and all life on earth was created is that light is a communication mechanism. So uh, very much as what, uh, as what Becker found is that the bioelectrical, the energetic systems of the body are controlling the biochemistry. So it's so critically important when, as you know, when we look at overall health, the uh, the energetic systems in the body have to be in balance with the biochemistry, meaning that if you're having a healthy diet, 
then you want to make sure that your communication systems are working with any number of different techniques, and then the person can have optimum health. So the way we approach this is that there are uh, natural compounds. They're principally uh, stereoisomers of amino acids. They're processed in a specific way, so they will uh, reflect specific wavelengths of light onto the skin uh, when activated by body heat. So this is a, a specific form of low-level light therapy. And um, I'm delighted to say that after 20 years of research, we have over 80 clinical studies uh, on this. So uh, those that are interested can go to our website, go to the science section, and uh, they can go through those studies. So a good way to understand this is that the uh, light that comes off of our products is encoded with information. So let me explain that for a minute. When we look at traditional low-level light therapy or light therapy in general, um, we can use wavelengths of light like 630 nanometers, 660, 850, 810, you know, any, any blend of infrared or visible light or even up into UV. And we know that's going to elicit a specific response. So it's pretty common knowledge that we expose the body to UV light and it gives people a tan. Uh, we expose to 660, we can turn on collagen production, we can improve mitochondrial function and so forth. And um, what I wanted to do with this was a little bit different. I wanted to see if we could use light to turn on production of specific peptides like glutathione, like GHK, AHK, carnosine. And uh, so the uh, the principle of this is that we do what you, you do in laser communications, is that instead of having a wave that is simply a sinusoidal, what we'll do is modulate the wave so it contains information. So now, you know, this is how, of course, you know, in the military, for example, you have site to site communications with a laser because the light is encoded with information. So the patches work the same way. There is a infrared carrier. It's modulated uh, to contain information to turn on synthesis of a specific peptide. Is because we do blood studies. Uh, so we'll take a baseline blood draw um, and we'll look at GHK levels. And as Lauren Picard discovered, uh, you know, he's the father of uh, GHK. Uh, we know that uh, copper peptide levels decline with age pretty dramatically. So we'll look at a population of people, say, over the age of 50, and we know their copper peptide levels are going to be down 60, 80 uh, percent, depending on a person's diet and how well they're taking care of themselves. So we'll do that baseline. And then in as little as 24 hours, we hit statistical significance and we'll see increases in both GHK and GHKCU. Uh, what's very typical is within the first uh, 24 hours, there's a very significant increase in GHK. And then over the course of the next seven days, you see the GHK bind with copper. And then there's a statistically significant improvement in GHKCU. Uh, but the um, metabolism studies that we do, we have one that's uh, published um, that's on our website. And we've done that with first a pilot study uh, with 15 people and then a double blind study uh, with 50 people. And uh, what that shows, uh, again, the statistical significance is that within the first week of using the product, uh, you see about a 30, 40 to percent, a 30 to 40 percent increase in the utilization of amino acids. So the utilization of leucine goes up. So we're going to get enhanced uh, muscle hypertrophy. Uh, we're going to see tryptophan increase. So in, in, in its uh, metabolism, and uh, that correlates with a sleep index that we do. So people get better sleep, and um, and also uh, branch chain amino acids. Uh, we see increase in metabolism of those. So people are recovering faster after exercise, and uh, they're healing faster. These products are very good tools. And, uh, you know, our message is that it's so critically important for people to build a strong foundation that if they're going to their healthcare practitioner to get advice on diet and exercise, lifestyle changes, 
keeping the toxins out, detoxifying regularly. This is so critically important because without that foundation, they're not going to get the best results out of uh, a product like LifeWave. And, uh, and we see some amazing things uh, and the people that get the best benefits are those that build up their foundation. You know, uh, so there's a lot to unpack there and, and talk about. Uh, you know, it, it seems like uh, God created us with the ability to upgrade and uh, deal with all of these challenges. And that's something that is incredibly exciting uh, because it uh, provides some hope that even though we're being bombarded with these synthetic man-made radiations, there are things we can do to protect ourselves. So, uh First thing is that, you know, to give credit where credit is due, Dr. Lauren Picard uh, discovered GHK, he discovered AHK, and uh, without his foundational work, uh, I wouldn't have been able to carry on and, and do the work that I'm doing. So I'm very, very appreciative to Dr. Picard for everything that he's done. Um, so developing, once we knew that we could elevate GHK with light, Designing a product to elevate AHK seemed to be a natural follow-up because the peptides are so similar. GHK, of course, is based on glycine, and AHK is based on alanine. And um, so this would, you know, glycine is fairly ubiquitous, and uh, it's rather easy to get in the diet, but alanine, not so much. Uh, meat eaters are definitely going to have an, adva an advantage over vegetarians or vegans. So if someone was interested in elevating their AHK, which they definitely should be, uh, they might want to look at supplementing with something like beta alanine uh, because it's very inexpensive and it's easy to come by. So what are some of these benefits? Well, the first thing that you find, uh, which we don't make a claim about, uh, but Dr. Picard is using AHK to regrow hair. Uh, it's about uh, equivalent, it's about 10 times more powerful than GHK, and it's equivalent to minoxidil uh, without the hormone manipulation at being able to uh, to grow hair. So that in the, in the literature was one of the principal benefits. Uh, but what I did with our team was to look at AHK metabolism. And uh, what we thought is that this might be very similar to carnosine in that you would find AHK uh, in the brain, in the heart, in the muscle fiber, and potentially also in the bone. So we did a uh, bone density test, and we found that we could reverse uh, age-related uh, osteoporosis in women. Um, so that in and of itself, we haven't published that study, but the study finished up to statistical significance that we could stop bone loss and reverse it with this peptide. And that... That was pioneering work uh, because it wasn't previously in the literature that we could find. Um, we also focused on the general health benefits. And uh, so we did uh, some general wellness studies where we took people and uh, put them on a mild exercise program. And what we saw was that the group that was using AHK did much, much better uh, than the uh, control group. And uh, in fact, uh, what was interesting is that we found that without any special diet, people lost body fat in addition to building lean muscle mass. So, uh, so that's an exciting area that we still want to explore a little bit more. Uh, but to your point, uh, we did a study with a biochemist looking at this problem of 5G and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and how pervasive it is and what could we do? So I came up with this hypothesis that you know we in our lab uh when we test things we might create a faraday cage and we might use a copper mesh surround a piece of equipment to isolate it from electromagnetic radiation and that does a very 